What's up, Dub Nation? Hello, YouTubers. This is Poor Man's Kamish, your Warriors credentialed insider. And today I'd like to do a deep cut. We're going to look at the Warriors coaching staff and recent changes. First of all, it all started back on June 3rd, about two weeks ago, when Steve Kerr went on Tim Kawakami's uh, podcast with The Athletic, and basically he said this. There's, uh, you know, there's there's going to be some changes, um, you know, and I've talked to the staff about it. I've, I've met with every guy, and, um, you know, we are now in a position, Tim, where we've been together for so long, um, that, and we haven't had the type of internal change, um, you know, that uh, that we had – um, five years ago when Luke Walden took the Laker job and, you know, took a couple guys with him and, and, you know, a, a staff is no different from a roster, you know, where you get, uh, you, you get a little stale and you need some new blood, you need some new energy. Um, you need to maybe move some things around, move, move pieces around, change roles. I mean, there's a, there's a lot that we're discussing. And um, so, I, so there are going to be some changes, and I don't know exactly what they're going to be yet. But I, I do feel like we're in a position now where um, you know we need uh, we need a little energy shift within the within the organization, and uh, and that's uh, that's something Bob and I have discussed, and as I said, I've discussed it with our whole staff, and and um, we're all you know we're, we're all in agreement, uh, frankly, that. Uh, you know, we're in a position now where we just need a we need we need a little jolt. First of all, I want to tell you that we have documented all of this on our Discord server, and you can access that through our Patreon. It's only one dollar a month for the next few days, I guess, and then it'll get bumped up to five dollars a month shortly thereafter. But uh, it pretty much has all of this as the news comes out and much, much more. Like uh, pretty much every player on the Warriors is covered. And especially during the playoffs here, we've got NBA news, we've got game commentary and all this extra little stuff. So go check that out if you can. So four days after that podcast came out, Jaron Collins decided to look for other opportunities. And he did that with the help of Mark Spears of The Undefeated, getting an article in there with uh, that publication that falls under the ESPN umbrella. Now, Jaron told Mark Spears that he's looking for a head coaching job somewhere. And Mark Spears went on 95.7 the game radio show and said they're going to make a couple other not as big as Collins changes as well. I'm guessing that you're going to see some more older veteran. I'm not going to say Ron Adams season names, but something of that ilk being added to the franchise. That's what Spears told 95.7. And then about a week later, it was announced that Dejan Milojevic I hope I pronounced that correctly. I checked around on Google, and I'm pretty sure Milojevic is how you pronounce it. But he was one of uh, Nikola Jokic's coaches, and that is his sort of claim to fame. He's had um, a lot of, of good connections in the league and had been talking to the Warriors for now two seasons. So now Anthony Slater of The Athletic then came out with a more in-depth analysis of that move, which was news that broke from a Serbian publication called Vigesti. Now, last season during the bubble, ESPN's Jackie McMullen did a profile on Milosevic, and it was actually a pretty interesting article if you get a chance to read it. First of all, Milosevic's nickname is the Serbian Barkley. 
And one of the cool things that I noticed in the article was that he was like super analytical on Jokic. One of the things he pointed out during the bubble when the Nuggets lost was that Jokic looked nervous. And that's why he uh, picked up his third foul really early. And he wasn't concerned about the Nuggets' chances and Jokic's upcoming performances. And sure enough, they advanced to the next round. There's a really good quote by Tim Connolly, the Nuggets' head of basketball operations. And he says, quote, He's not teaching Nikola to dribble, dribble to the left shoulder. It's dribble, dribble and reach under the elbow to shoot with the left hand. There's no cookie cutter learning. He's teaching his guys to become unique players. So as Slater writes, it's pretty obvious that Milosevic is being brought in to specifically work with James Wiseman. Milosevic has had some good results with other NBA players, such as Zubats of the Clippers. Now, as I mentioned before, Milojevic was known as the Serbian Barkley. He is an imposing figure, six foot seven. And we can be sure that should there be any brawls, all the Warriors will be safe. Now with James, James Wiseman is going to, at some point during the summer, meet up with Kevin Garnett. He said that in a podcast with NBC Sports Bay Area's Monty Poole. Uh, we should. Uh, I'm getting better rapidly, like at a high rate, and uh, I'm getting better like each day because I'm taking care of myself. So uh, that should still happen for sure. Man, I'm be super excited. KG is one of my favorite players, and man, KG is man. T- man, his like intensity is crazy. So I most definitely love to work out with KG. Like, man, that's like one of my dreams. Most definitely. So, what parts of his game do you most want to steal from, if I could put it that way? Uh, I say his mentality, and I also say that uh, his defensive end, like defensive end, like KG was a monster. So I almost definitely say defense, and just his mentality, like how he approached the game each game. So, yeah. But I also found this little nugget right here that sort of gets into the whole uh, coaching thing and having more like veteran coaches. So just check this one out. And how did you figure out which coaches you were going to focus on, and you know, sort of which advice you was going to focus on? Uh, really, what made that situation better is, uh, I say, just focus on the people that actually knows the game. Like, everybody know the game on the staff, but the people that actually done it, I can say. So I say Steve most definitely helped me out. Um, I say Bob actually helped me out a little bit. He gave me a lot of advice. Uh, my teammates gave me a lot of advice. So mostly just um, Steve and my teammates uh, are the main people that actually I listen to a lot for information or just ask a question so I could be able to go out there and execute it. It makes me wonder, maybe Steve realized he was spending a lot of time giving advice to Wiseman and it's like, why don't we get a guy who can spend this time with James, uh, such as Milojevic, and that'll free me up to do more of the whole team managing and coaching aspects. So it makes you wonder, it makes you wonder if this kind of factored into it. Milojevic also appears to be quite the veteran. He's got a good name amongst NBA circles, as Slater wrote. And also that brings us to another item that Slater brought up, which is Theo Robertson and Luke Laux, a couple of the Warriors' assistant co- uh, coaches. They've left. There was no other indication as to what had happened, but it's probably similar to what went on with Jaron Collins in that it was a mutual understanding. I'm going to guess that Steve sat down with those two and said, hey, look, we're we're looking to add more veterans to our coaching staff, sort of in parallel to all the talk about adding veterans to the actual roster. And maybe it's time for you guys to go seek out other opportunities. And so I I think it was a friendly parting of ways, but, you know, we're probably never going to know if Laux and Theo, who, by the way, are friends of Let's Go Warriors. We saw them all the time when we filmed the pregame workouts and uh, 
morning shoot arounds, working with guys and, and things like that. So we're going to miss them. And they were a couple of our uh, supporters out there, but things change. And it definitely looks like Steve wants to, as he said in the Tim Kawakami podcast, and to really shake things up so that it's sort of uh, a new feeling for all of the Warriors players. But one question still remains, and that's who's going to be doing all the workouts with these guys? I mean, Theo and Luke aren't sage veterans by any means, but at the same time, they are two of the most athletic assistant coaches out there. Uh, Luke and Theo were routinely uh, holding their own in three-on-threes and four-on-fours. So I don't know if there's sort of a change in who they think they can get to run against certain warriors who are in rehab, let's say, to do five-on-fives. I don't know who they have in mind for that, but doesn't look like Luke and Theo will be two of those guys. So at the same time, you can understand that they want to have more veteran presence in the coaching staff, but also how does that affect the actual workouts? So I'm curious to see who they end up going with on that, if it's just really getting some new faces in there or what. Of course, we still got Leandro Barbosa. Sean Livingston is still working as a general manager's assistant. And you've got Zaza Pachulia doing things that we still aren't quite clear on. And finally, Slater also reported in his article that Ron Adams might even get a more expanded role. So we'll just have to see what happens with this coaching staff as we go. Now, Mike Brown and Chris DeMarco will remain on the uh, staff. And I've been told that DeMarco has not been informed if he's going to take over Collins's old role of defensive coordinator. So we'll just have to see how that one shakes out as well. And finally, I would be remiss if I didn't add the fact that in the last couple days, we've seen Stan Van Gundy get fired from the Pelicans. We've seen Scott Brooks and the Washington Wizards go their separate ways. And now Rick Carlisle is leaving the Mavs, I'm sure most of you have heard, as of Thursday, June 17th. Well, that leaves Steve Kerr as the third longest tenured coach currently in the NBA, behind only Greg Popovich and Eric Spolstra. So again, deep cuts here. We're going into the coaching staff today, which... You know, at the end of the day, the players primarily determine wins and losses, but I thought I would just uh, catch you guys all up on the coaching staff stuff because things have been happening over the last two weeks plus. So that's all I have for today, but I will keep trying to update you with the latest and greatest on various other things that are happening with the Warriors. I've got something on Steph Curry lined up. And so with that, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And let's go Warriors.